Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss how to do the deductions of a parabola. Now you would notice when you're doing deductions in the exams, they're not going to give you only a parabola or only a hyperbola, only an exponent. They're going to link it with other graphs. So in this graph, you can clearly see they have a parabola, but then they also have straight lines. So they tend to join a few graphs together when they're doing deductions. In order to master your deductions, you must know how to draw your graphs. Now what are the steps for drawing the graphs? The x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and then your q's. Because your q's are usually your turning points, your asymptotes, you need to know that. But also in reverse, you need to know how to get the equations. So like how you must know how to draw the graphs, you must also be aware of how to get the equations. Then you need to remember that lengths that are vertical are the y values and lengths that are horizontal are the x values. So in order to master your deductions, you must be able to do all of this. Now when I say get equations, you must know your straight line, your parabola, hyperbola exponent. You must also know the relationship between parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Most of the time in grade 10, they would question you on your parallel lines, but you should know a bit of your perpendicular lines. Now that again is your grade 9 revision. If you're not familiar with this, go over your analytical geometry because it has been recovered in those sections. They actually reteach it like a new section in analytical geometry. So go over your analytical geometry. Those are extra questions that are not usually linked to your functions. But in knowing them, they can only benefit you because the questions are so similar, so exactly the same, that it's basically the same thing with a different name. Now let's go to the graph. Okay, they say, find the equation of the parabola. Now you need to know, hey, the red one is the parabola, not the black one. If you can't even tell the basic difference between those, you already messed up. Now to get the equation of a parabola, we know that f of x is equal to ax squared plus q. Q is my turning point. Clearly, it is 4. So I've got AX squared plus 4. So F of X is equal to AX squared plus 4. Now, to get my A, which is your A, this has been discussed in the previous videos on how to get the equation, you can take any random value that is on the parabola. I can't go and take a value like L because it's not on the parabola. I can't take this minus 3. It's not on the parabola. You have to take values that are on the parabola. Now, I'm taking... 2 and 0. So f of x is 0, a into 2 squared plus 4. That would mean 4a is equal to minus 4, a is equal to minus 1. So what is my equation? My equation is f of x is equal to minus 1 x squared plus 4. So we have that this graph is equal to minus 1 x squared plus 4. Now, graphs become very important in deductions. If you don't know the equations of the graphs, you are not going to be able to do the rest of the deduction. You must have the equations of the graphs. Then it says, find the equation of the straight line LE. Now, this year they like to do. You see, children would look at L and E, which is exactly what you did. And now you're thinking, but I don't have two coordinates. But look if you take the whole line. Look at what we have. We have two coordinates. So I would have had, you know, for a straight line, we need M. M requires two points. We've got two coordinates, 1 and 0 and 0 and 1. Again, you're marking it. It doesn't matter which way you mark it, provided the 2's are in one group, the 1's are in one group. So I have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That would mean m is equal to 0 minus 1 all over 1 minus 0. So my m is equal to minus 1. That is just my gradient. What would my equation be? y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. So we have y. You can take any coordinate. I'm going to choose the one where y is 0. So I'm going to have y minus 0 is equal to minus 1 into x 
minus 1, giving me a final answer of minus x plus 1. So y is equal to minus x plus 1. That is the equation of the straight line LE. So here I would have had g of x is equal to minus x plus 1. Now do you notice I'm labeling this one f of x, then I'm labeling this one g of x. Why am I doing that? The reason we're doing this is when we have too many graphs on one, we can't label them all y is equal to. Because then when you say y is equal to, which one are you referring to? Now this is telling us, listen, f of x, I'm referring to the red one. g of x, I'm referring to the straight line LE. So that's how come we label them differently. Now we're done with that question. Now it says, calculate the length of IE. So we have IE if x is equal to 1. Now we know, and this one here, I would like you to start doing it the way I'm showing you because it later becomes very useful, this method, especially in grade 11. What you have learned is that when I want to calculate a length that is vertical, I would say the y of the top minus the y of the bottom. So if they ask me for the length of IE, what we're doing is we're going to take this y and we're going to subtract it from this y. Now, what I'd like you to get into the habit of, instead of simply substituting, which we had done in straight line graphs, and then taking that answer and then giving me the final answer. So I substitute in here 1, right? And you'll see if we do it, right? If you substitute 1 in here, I'm going to have minus 1 into 1 squared plus 4, and then you get 3, and then you're going to say, okay, this one here, is 0, so I'm going to have 3 minus 0, which is 3. What I would like you to do is, you must see what is the top graph. The top graph is the parabola. Now, we usually refer to this as y, isn't it? So, the top graph is a parabola, so I have minus 1x squared plus 4. And then the bottom graph is the equation that we calculated for g of x. So, it would be minus, and then what is the bottom graph? minus x plus 1. So what am I ending up with? IE is equal to minus x squared plus 4 plus x minus 1. Now what is the value of x at that point? 1 minus into 1 squared plus 4 plus 1 minus 1, which equals to 3 units also. Now I know that this seems like a longer method, but if you get into the habit of saying, listen, I'm still saying y top, because that is the y of the top, and I'm still saying subtract y of the bottom, but I'm getting the equations. Now the reason I would prefer to, for you to get into this habit is because in grade 11 the questions get much more challenging. And when the questions get challenging, you need the equations because you can't simply substitute. So they'll say, Get, find an equation for line IE, and then this would be what you're looking for. Then in grade 12, they'll say, get the maximum length, and then that would consider calculus, which is derivative. So it is good to get into the habit of doing this. So now when I do the equations, I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and do it this way. I will do it on the side. If you are uncomfortable and not ready to do this method, you can use this as a quick fix. So basically, I substitute in the top one, so here I've got my coordinate as 1 and then I got my coordinate as 3 which is what we did here and then here I know my coordinate is 1 and 0 and I simply took my y's and subtracted them. So I am going to do that on the side but I'm also going to try and do this one. Now they're asking calculate the length of jk. So we already have that jk is the top is the parabola minus the bottom which is the straight line. So we already have the answer here. It's minus x squared plus 4 plus x minus 1. You've already done top of parabola minus straight line. Now they're telling us that x is equal to minus 1 and you can see it on the drawing. So we have minus into minus 1 squared plus 4 plus negative 1 negative 1. So we have that jk is equal to 1 unit. Okay, you could have done the substitution, so we're substituting here into the parabola, 
minus 1. So we have minus 1 into minus 1 squared plus 4 gives me plus 3. And then I'm going to substitute into the straight line. The straight line was minus 1x plus 1. So I'm substituting minus 1 in there, which is 2. And then I'll say top minus bottom, 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. So you got this coordinate. We got it as minus 1 and 3. And we got this coordinate as minus 1 and 2. And then we said top minus bottom. Remember, both ways are applicable. But I would like you to get into the habit of writing it as equations first. Then they say calculate the length of the line LM. Now look at LM. What graph is on top? The straight line. What graph is at the bottom? The parabola. So if we're saying straight line, it means minus 1x plus 1 minus what is at the bottom? The parabola minus x squared plus 4. So LM is equal to the straight line minus the parabola. So we have LM is equal to minus x plus 1 plus x squared minus 4. Now why? Because it's going in. Then we have that LM, they're telling us that the x value at that point is minus 3. So it means that at x I'm substituting minus 3. What do I have now? Here I have a positive 3 plus 1, positive 3 plus 1 plus 9 minus 4, giving us 9 units. Now, we can do it the other way, which means that I know that this coordinate at L, x is minus 3. How do I get y? I simply substitute my x into the straight line equation. So that would give me minus 1 into minus 3 plus 1, which gives me 4. Then I go to m. Now m is my parabola. I know that my x is minus 3. I'm going to substitute my minus 3 into the parabola x squared. So I have minus 1 into minus 3 squared, which gives me negative 9, because I got 9. Let's just do this here. If I got minus 1 into minus 3 squared plus 4. So that is equal to negative 5. Now, if I want the length, I would say the y of the top minus the y of the bottom. So what am I having? 4, four minus minus 5, which is equal to 9. So either way, you would get the same answer. Let us look at the next question. The next question says, calculate the equation of the straight line passing f. If Le, which means that the one we've worked with, Le, is parallel to this equation. Now that would be very relevant information. Parallel means what? If they are parallel, it means that their gradients are equal. So we know that the gradient of Le is minus 1, which would mean immediately that the gradient of the second line is minus 1. So I know that m is equal to minus 1. Why? Because they told me that the lines are parallel. And parallel lines have equal gradients. Okay, so I know that the gradient is minus 1. But then they also give me a coordinate. The coordinate is 0 and minus 4. So I now have a coordinate 0 and minus 4. And that is all you need to get the equation of a straight line. Now you can use the equation y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. Remember, if you are not familiar with this work, go over your grade 9 revision of how to get the equation or go over your analytical geometry and most of this is covered in those sections. So I got y minus minus 4 is equal to my m is minus 1 into x minus 0. So I have minus x minus 4. y is equal to minus x minus 4. This one here, we can make it h of x y is equal to minus 1x minus 4. Now look at the next question. The next question wants the length of gh. gh is working with minus 5, but it is the y value. What I need 
is the coordinate of h. I know that the y value is minus 5, but I don't have the x value. However, I do know that it's on a parabola. Now, what is the parabola's equation? The parabola's equation is y is equal to minus x squared plus 4. I know that I have the following information. Now, if y is minus 5, to get in x, I would substitute into the original. So, I have minus 5 is equal to minus x squared plus 4. We're now going to solve for x. So, I'm going to take this over. I'm going to have minus 9 is equal to minus x squared. Divide by negative, so I got x squared is equal to 9. If you square root it or you do difference of two squares, whichever you're comfortable with, we would have had x minus 3, x plus 3. So we have x is equal to minus 3 and x is equal to positive 3. Right, but look at the graph again. When they're looking for this graph, is it on the negative side or is it on the positive side? We are working on the positive side. So I know that x is equal to 3 is the relevant answer. This one is not applicable. Now, what is the length of that line? What is the length of gh? The length of gh is going to equal to 3 units. Thank you for watching.